Hey guys, it's Ross. I have a really special fig that I want to review for you guys today. It's called Moro de Caneva or Figo Moro. And uh, this is a variety that actually is a commercial variety. Um, it has a lot of commercial potential that's grown in a lot of commercial settings. And therefore, I believe um, a fig like that usually is spread around the world quite frequently. And therefore, when it goes to different places, people just call it different things. And it ends up getting called by different names. So this fig has a lot of different names. Um, some of which, like this one here, is called Norino. Um, there's also Fico Secco that I'm growing. That one's from Paolo Bologna. And then there's also a third that I'm growing called Sivarfuge, which is also from another collector um, that also is a synonym for Moro de Caneva. And there's two others that I speculate on that I'm not entirely sure of. So I'll hold judgment for now until I actually grow them myself in person. But it's very easy to determine um, if your variety is indeed Moro de Caneva. In fact, you can even tell before the figs are even ripe, uh, actually well before the figs are ripe. And you'll see on the unripe figs, um, you'll end up seeing here actually a little lip. It's like a little collar that, believe it or not, is on the fig. So right where the stem attaches to the neck, you see these little lips on both sides that almost forms like a collar. And they're pretty distinct. You'll see them um, not on every single fig, but you will see them as the fig might uh, progress throughout its productivity throughout the season. Um, you'll definitely see that as a distinct characteristic on the fig. So that's one little way there, guys, that if you're ever confused with this variety, it also has a very long stem uh, for the most part. In fact, this is the longest stem fig I've ever seen. When you have a stem this long, I mean, it's, it's basically as long as the entire fig, actually, which is kind of insane. Um, it's about an inch in length. And if you have a variety that has a very long stem or, you know, the combination of a long stem and a combination of a long neck, it's very easy to pick it. You don't end up breaking the stem in most cases. If you keep the stem intact, you therefore preserve the quality of the fig for a longer period of time. If I rip this off at the neck um, and the stem is then still on the tree, this is just not going to hold up as well in my kitchen or in the fridge, um, on the counter, whatever it is, wherever you guys have this fig. So that's a really nice characteristic. I also find that this one really just only, I think about two days ago, was not even ripe. So in a very short period of time, it went from ripe to dried. Basically, it is now shriveled up on the tree. Um, I wouldn't say like a cork dried, but in my opinion, this fig has a shorter hang time than you would imagine. It has great drying capabilities. And because it has really no cracking in it, it has a pretty closed eye, not totally closed. There's an ant in here actually doing its little thing, but uh, I would say most of them have a closed eye. The combination of that, it doesn't split, doesn't have cracks, will allow this fig to really hold up pretty well. The skin isn't being torn apart like you would see maybe on like a Hardy Chicago or some other varieties. It does have a thinner skin though, which is easily, you can get through that, I'm sure. But for the most part, you can kind of see the commercial potential in this, especially here in a really bad climate. Uh, for figs like mine. So I find also it's quite productive. Um, it's also quite productive for lower light conditions. If you have a very dense canopy, it still will produce pretty well for you. Um, let's see, it's, uh, it's reasonably vigorous as well. So I can't really comment without a doubt and say, oh, it has amazing productivity and amazing vigor because I haven't had it long enough yet but it does seem like it's got at least average productivity and at least average vigor uh, for a fig variety um, 
The leaves are quite nice. It's also a hardy fig. Uh, this has been tested in the mountains, I believe, um, of Italy. And I think it's gotten down to at least five degrees Fahrenheit, if I remember correctly. Um, so that's interesting. I don't know if it'll survive here. It's worth a shot, it's worth a test. And I have a plot in the front of in-ground figs that I'm not protecting in the wintertime. And this would probably be a good choice for that plot to see what would survive here. Um, let me cut this open. It's also a very tasty fig, which we're gonna see in a minute here. Um, it's very tasty. Actually, this the color on this is kind of strange. But usually it's a dark red fig in the inside that um, resembles, in my opinion, a lot something like a Villette de Bordeaux. And it has a similar flavor profile. So for me, I have found this fig to be superior in a, a number of ways to Villette de Bordeaux, but also tastes the same or similar. I shouldn't say the same. So with a similar taste profile, if you can find something that is better in multiple different ways, this would then eventually replace Villette de Bordeaux or any fig like that. So for me, this is the replacement and that it has superior drying capabilities, as you can clearly see, has great flavor. Um, and also it has good commercial potential. It doesn't mold like Villette de Bordeaux does because um, Villette de Bordeaux tends to crack and can split at the eye. So let me show you guys now the inside of this guy. Um, I've seen it in prior, the prior year now, because my tree is quite young. It actually was a bit redder than that. So I was a bit surprised to see that it's uh, a light red color right now. And I know for sure it should consistently be a darker red, but hey, I'm not complaining. <sighs> Had one little ant on this guy. Again, I'm even shocked to see it right now that it's sort of dried, really strange. Yeah, that's really good. Um, this to me reminds me a lot of kind of the flavor profile of a of a blue celeste. Um, maybe not so much on the same level as a Villette de Bordeaux in terms of the, the same flavor profile. That one was very figgy has a good berry profile to it, a lot like a Concord grape. And uh, it was very thick and very jammy. So for me, it fills a lot of boxes. It tastes a lot like Blue Celeste. Tastes a lot like um, some hardy Chicago types with a little bit less strawberry to it. Um, almost like a fruity berry fig or a light berry fig, very figgy because it had a lot of that dried consistency, that those dried qualities to it. Um, you know, as the fig ripens, it starts to get more of the figgy flavors that become more pronounced. And uh, yeah, overall, I'd say that fig is probably at least a four and a half out of five. So it has a great review. I actually think I prefer this one over Sucret. Um, I've been sort of changing my opinions very quickly in the last couple of days, but I really like Sucret. But now that I have Blue Celeste and this fig here, it kind of just eliminates Sucret in a way. Um, seems like a no-brainer to me. I don't think this fig really has anything super special about the flavor. It's just a high-quality fig. So um, I wouldn't argue and say, you know, this is a fig that everybody's got to try and taste, like a Black Madeira or like a... Cold Adam as an example, but for the flavor, it's got an incredible flavor that's just a high quality fig. Um, it's hard to find this, I think, at the consistency that this variety can put out. So that's for me why I love it. And it is a four out of five, you know, I can't argue with that. 4.5 out of five. So, all right, guys, thank you so much here for watching this one. Um, I've been propping, well, one last thought here. I've actually been in love with this fig so much that I decided to propagate this quite a bit. 
and I took as many cuttings as I could last year off of a few trees I have now on the ground. I gave some away to friends and trades to help spread this variety around the community. Um, mostly northern growers uh, because I think they would appreciate this more than anybody else. But um, to be honest with you, I have propagated a number of these now and have planted them all around the yard. Um, I probably have, I don't know, close to 10 of them at this point, uh, whether they're in pots or whether they're in the ground. So I'm gonna be really trying hard to um, make this one available to people because I do think it has so many great characteristics to it that um, this would be a great fig in just about every climate um, and for a lot of different purposes too. So yeah, thank you guys here so much for watching this one. We'll see you soon, all right? Hit that subscribe button. Take care, guys.